straight ahead in the red zone. A rough one at Sam Boyd. We look back at what went wrong against Arkansas State and what needs to be cleaned up moving forward. Head coach Tony Sanchez is in studio to break it all down. Plus, a look ahead to the first roadie of the year as UNLV travels to Chicago to take on Northwestern. And the Fertitta Football Complex is getting ready to open. How much of a game changer will it be for this program? We ask other Mountain West coaches. The Red Zone is ready for 30 minutes of UNLV football right now. This is the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, sponsored by R.C. Willie and Levitt Law Firm. Welcome inside the Red Zone. Kevin Bollinger alongside UNLV head football coach Tony Sanchez coming off a Rebel loss to Arkansas State on Saturday night. And coach, you know we aren't going to sugarcoat it here. Yep. That was ugly. It was. I was really disappointed. You know, I felt like early on, you know, the defense played well in that first half, but we're always behind the eight ball offensively. When that first drive, you know, results in a, you know, in a pick six, which isn't good. Uh, we had uh, two punts in that first half that were really short, gave them short field position, you know, 35 going in, and really that resulted in 17 points. Um, and the offense never really uh, found its footing. It, you know, never, never looked comfortable all night. Armani didn't look comfortable. We didn't throw the ball well downfield. And a lot of things need to be cleaned up as we move forward. We're going to dive deeper into this game and the analysis in just a bit. But first, we're going to take a closer look at what happened and things started poorly and didn't get much better. This is a great opportunity that we've been working for for years upon years upon years. We've been stacking this program, changing the culture, blowing it up and building it stronger every day for moments like this. Can we continue to go? They are not the challenge tonight. It's us. It's about us. Are you guys into this thing? Yes, sir. 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 Icky Woods in the house to commemorate the UNLV teams of the 1980s in Sam Boyd's farewell season. This one did not start good for the Rebels. Third play from scrimmage, Armani Rogers back to pass and it's deflected, batted in the air and picked off by Jeremy Smith. He returns it 35 yards for an Arkansas State touchdown. It was 7-0 before most fans had settled in. The offense struggled throughout the night. Rodgers gets sacked on the next possession and UNLV had to punt. The defense would get the ball right back and once again, protection broke down as Rodgers goes down again, forcing another punt that was only 27 yards and Arkansas State started at the Rebel 34. They converted that into a 26 yard field goal by Blake Groupie to make it 10 nothing. The offense finally got into a rhythm, putting together a 16 play drive that pushed them into the red zone but they were only able to get a 27-yard field goal from Daniel Gutierrez to cut the deficit to 10-3. Arkansas State drove inside the 20 and went forward on fourth and four at the 14, but watch Jericho Flowers close fast. He knocks the ball away to get UNLV the ball back. Once again, though, the offense went three and out, and Hayes Hicken's punt was shanked into the crowd for 17 yards, giving the Red Wolves great field position once again at the Rebel 31. This time they cashed in. Quarterback Logan Bonner keeps it himself from a yard out. That pushes the lead to 17-3 midway through the second quarter. Arkansas State would score again just before the half as Ryan Graham takes it in from nine yards out. The point after was blocked, but UNLV went into the locker room at halftime trailing 23-3. The Red Wolves had the ball to start the second half. They quickly went 75 yards in eight plays half by Bonner to Kirk Merritt. And thanks to some missed tackles, he goes 37 yards for the touchdown. And this is blown open at 30 to three. UNLV would get things going thanks to Charles Williams. Watch him run right, turn the corner, and then cut across the field while turning on the Jets. Williams rolls 78 yards all the way down to the three yard line. And that would set the Rebels up. On the very next play, Williams finishes it off going flat out to die for the pylon and the score that would make it 30 to 10. On the next two UNLV drives, Rogers took sacks once again. That brought losses of eight and nine yards to stall drives. Meanwhile, Arkansas State kept scoring. 
Bonner to Omar Bayless, and he is off to the races for a 71-yard touchdown. The Red Wolves' lead would continue to grow. Late in the game, Kenyon Oblak came in at quarterback, and he went three of three on the drive, including this toss to Randall Grimes, who takes it to the house for a 56-yard score as the two local products hook up. But this one was lopsided. UNLV was outgained by nearly 200 yards. They had only 112 through the air and gave up six sacks. It all adds up to a 43-17 defeat to Arkansas State. We knew they were going to throw the ball, so we basically tried to match up with it, and we just had to go out there and compete. It's all about if you want to win, you have to have, you have to have that will to win and will to compete. So that's what all happened. So it's a great team, and we've been working our our tails off this whole fall camp, whole summer, and one game's not going to define us. We're going to go out there, we're going to keep giving it our all. All right, let's start breaking this one down with the offensive side of the ball. Six sacks, there were some offensive line breakdowns, uh, and also Ar Armani Rogers seemed to hold on to the ball a lot longer than he should have uh, for a couple of those sacks as well. Yeah, you know, especially early in the game, a lot of the pressure came in, in that second half. There were some in the first half, but early on, you know, he had opportunities to throw the ball, and we just the ball placement wasn't very good, and then and again, some of the delayed decision making wasn't good. Um, but you know, that first half, I believe five of the first eight possessions were three and outs. I mean, you just can't do that. We've got to find our footing, got to find our ground. We got to do a better job of putting him in a situation where he can be successful. Um, and and you know, we can't completely get away from the quarterback run game either. I mean, we we kind of got away from that, and I know we you know we want to keep him healthy and everything, but at the same time, what makes him special is him being an athlete out there. So he's got to perform at a better level. we got to do a better job of preparing these guys. From what you saw from Armani last night, how much of it is physical mechanics and how much of it is mental upstairs? And how easy or hard is it to correct either one before next week? A little bit of both. I mean, throwing on his back, off his back foot a lot. Saw that on film today. That's something that you know is kind of uncharacteristic. So it just didn't look comfortable out there. So we got to make sure we get that level of comfort up, and uh, we have to challenge him to, to play at a better level. But we also got to protect him. The offensive line's got to do a better job. He doesn't need to be getting hit as much as he does. Um, but the ball accuracy has really got to really got to improve. We got some really good receivers out there, and, and there were some drops out there that didn't help the situation at all. But we got to be able to get those distribute the ball to more athletes than just Chuck. You said after the game in your post-game news conference that the coaching staff was going to look at the quarterback situation. Kenny Oblad has come in and played well in two games, all by it uh, in cleanup roles against twos and threes, but has still performed well. Where is this staff right now? What are you going to do moving forward with these two quarterbacks? You know, it's kind of like I told the guys in the locker room after the game, it's time for some of the young guys and not be settled in their roles and to compete, compete, compete. I mean, he should be out there every day trying to get that one job and, and pushing Armani. So um, our Armani is more than capable of doing it. We've seen him do it. You know, um, obviously it was not a good night. Kenny came in and did some good things again, like you said, late in the game the last two weeks. But he's got a live arm and, um, you know, there may be an opportunity for him to get out there and uh, show what he can do. When will you make that decision uh, throughout the week? Do you want to see it in practice? this week as well? Have to see it in practice. Have to see it in practice. So we, we, again, we're going to kind of tinker with what we're doing a little bit. We've been a really productive offense over the years. We have a lot of guys returning, a lot of veterans there. So there's no excuse for offensive performance like that. So we'll get it corrected. So i um, not going to elaborate much more on the quarterback spot, but if, uh, if the situation presents itself and we feel comfortable with it, we'll go ahead and give him an opportunity. One bright spot, Charles Williams, once again, showing what he can do, 168 yards, including uh, that huge run for 78 yards yeah. in there that set up a touchdown. Uh, he's, he's somebody who showed what he can do with athletic ability and the burst of speed. Yeah, he's a strong, powerful runner. You know, you've seen it a couple of weeks in a row. Um, again, you know, we, we had an idea that he was capable of doing it, but you got to see it in games. And that's a good defense we won against uh, the other night. So, um, I, you know, proud of him. He played his guts out you know, the entire night. So if we keep getting performances out of him like that, get stuff corrected in the passing game, get the ball to more athletes, uh, we'll, we'll have an opportunity to get this thing going. Let's flip over to the other side of the ball here. And defensively, yeah. you knew Arkansas State was going to throw the football. They threw it 50 times against SMU in week one. Switched up the defense a little bit uh, to more of a 3-4 and a lot of things. but did not get any pressure on the quarterback, and that kind of set them up to kind of pick things apart. Yeah, that's kind of the flip side of it. You know, you go to the 3-4 to kind of, you know, you get that drop eight, and you bring in a fourth guy here and there, and, you know, we got some pressures on him, knocked him down a couple of times, but for the most part, had a lot of time back there. But I will say this, early in the game, the defense played well. I mean, you go through that first quarter, and they did some really good things. Twice they had the short fields, you know, at the 35 yards, plus the pick six. So 17 of those points were really on short fields. We had a couple fourth down stops, you know. We, we had, again, the short field where we held them to a field goal. But when the offense was just
just going three and out and three and out and three and out. You know, in the first quarter, uh, we had the ball for 10 minutes and we got three, uh, three, um, three points out of it, right? They had the ball for like, I don't know, four something and ended up with 10 points because of a pick and because of a 35 yard field to kick the field goal. Then you go to the second quarter, and we only had the ball for, I believe, five minutes, and they had it for nine-something, and, you know, we had seven points out of that. So when you look at time of possession in the first half and what you were able to do with it, that was a huge difference. So all of a sudden you're behind the eight ball, you know, going into the locker room. There, We've talked a lot about the back end with the DVs, and mm-hmm. this was the first time with this collective unit that they were tested this year. How would you grade them out after looking at the game live and then also going back and looking at tape? Well, I thought Jericho did some good things. You know, their quarterback was really accurate, but, you know, Jericho made some plays. Did, you know, they, they went after him a couple of times. I thought Techman played well back there. Evan had a decent first half, second half. You know, the, the tackling wasn't great. And then Plummer just playing a little too soft in coverage, you know. And then you saw the one at the end where they scored a 71-yarder and the corner falls down. I mean, literally just falls down, you know, trips up, and the guy goes into the distance. So we got to get better there, but we know we're going to have some challenges back there. But, again, I, I, and I'll take this right back to offensively. You know, we're, we can't go out and score 10 points in one football game. We've got to be more productive. We've got to be able to move the chains. We have to flip field position. You know, we've got to be more efficient in the passing game. And, and, and I, we know we can do it. We've seen these guys do it before. But the bottom line is you only get 12 opportunities to do them, and two of them are already gone. So we have 10 more chances, go to Northwestern, and we need to see an improvement. You have to have short-term memory uh, in yeah. this game, definitely. What do you do with the players now that they've had, you know, 24, 48 hours to kind of soak this up? You get them at practice on Monday. How do you make sure that their mental mindset gets back and focus, that they put this game behind them and move on to Northwest? Well, the biggest thing is going to be ownership. You know, I mean, it starts with myself to the rest of the coaches, through all the players. I mean, we're an older veteran group. Guys have been around for a long time. They have to own the things that they did that they can correct and get better at. You know, the lack of execution, you know, some of the tackling in space. Again, the, the protection. If I'm an offensive lineman, I'm frustrated right now. My quarterback got hit that much. You know, if I'm a quarterback, I'm frustrated that I wasn't putting balls on the money. And we all need to be accountable in the building. And if we do that, we can get a corrected real fast. It's uh, on to the next one, as they always say. That is what we have to do, and it is the first road game of the season. UNLV heads to Chicago this weekend to take on Northwestern. So what's in store for this one? We're going to break it down in just two minutes as the Red Zone rolls on. You're watching the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, sponsored by R.C. Willie and Levitt Law Firm. All right, Northwestern this Saturday afternoon in Chicago, and this is a team that's played only one game this year, yeah. Coach. They played at Stanford. They lost a, a close, low-scoring game, and it, it's apparent, at least from, from looking at this tape, very stout defense. Uh, that you're going to have to go up against on Saturday. Yeah, you know, those are two run-heavy teams that played each other, you know, in week one. Um, you know, they had some offensive frustrations and actually made a change at quarterback during the game, and the guy that went in and ended up breaking his foot and having surgery, so he's done. Um, but, you know, they'll, they'll get better. They've had a week to, to take a look at it and to correct some things. Um, you know, they're a team that wants to get downhill and run the ball at you. You know, I feel like our defense, you know, is strong there, so we've got to do a good job of defending the run, and then we've just got to get some things corrected in the, in the passing game. You know, the last bunch of years, We've played Ohio State, and we've played USC's, and we've played Michigan's, and we've always been able to move the ball down the field and get some points on the board and put some drives together. So we need to be able to do that early to get some confidence for the offense and help the defense out. And I think if we do that, I think we've got a chance to be able to challenge them. Yeah, UNLV has played well against Power 5 conferences uh, on the road especially. They don't get overwhelmed by the stage. That goes back to the mental makeup uh, of, of the teams that you have had. Is that get built into the week preparation as well, practice-wise, is to make sure that they don't get overwhelmed when they get to the big stadium? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we handle it well the way we travel. You know, we'll get up there on the Thursday, the Friday, they get a chance to go see the stadium, take pictures, do whatever they want to do. So when you show up on Saturday, it's all business. So the uh, biggest thing for us is just adjusting to the week we just went through and making sure we go out there with a high level of execution and confidence. The, when you talked about them being run heavy, they're just a, a heavy offense. Yeah. So overall, I mean, they're, they're a team that's maybe not as flashy, but – uh, they're going to pound it down your throat if you're not ready. So uh, this is going to be a physical ball game for your team. It really is. I mean, they always have stout offensive lines. Like you said, interior defensively, that front seven is always really stout and kind of their coach's personality. And You know, they're they, you know, a high-level academic school, and they're a team that as the season goes on, they just get better and better and better. You see it year in and year out. So, you know, I mean, you know, for a group of guys like that to be compete, competing for conference championships every year, that's, that's a big deal. So um, it's going to be a challenge for us, but we're excited about it. Well, we have uh, big facility changes going 
going on at UNLV football. The Fertitta Football Complex is opening soon, and uh, the team going to be playing next year in the nearly $2 billion Allegiant Stadium. So how is all that going to help upgrade the program? Other Mountain West coaches weigh in. It's all on the back side of the break. Stay with us. You're watching the Fox 5 Rep Zone Sports Show, sponsored by R.C. Willie and Levitt Law Firm. By now, you've probably seen video of the Fertitta Football Complex on campus as it's being built. The finished product going to be unveiled here just in the coming weeks. It's a major step in becoming more competitive in the college football landscape. So we went and talked to head coaches around the Mountain West to get their take on what the impact will be. Take one look around the Fertitta football complex and you can see how much it's going to upgrade UNLV football. Talk to Mountain West coaches and they speak with a little envy. They know it's a game changer. It's huge. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a huge part of it. You know, it's, it's, it's the experience that the kids can have. And to me, the facilities show commitment, they show belief, and quite, quite the, 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 big, the matter of fact to me is, is that they can be better students, they can be better athletes when they have the proper facilities that allow them to be. A majority of their time is spent there and when you walk into a new facility and you get a chance to see it, you're like, okay, this is a really good environment. This is where I'm going to spend a lot of my time as a player. Parents are going, you know what, this is where he's going to be. Uh, I feel like he's safe. I feel like this is a good environment. Uh, so it's important. Whether it's a training facility, academic center, or something as simple as a place to hang out, Everything is designed with football and family in mind. When recruiting 17 and 18 year olds, the wow factor does play a role in their final decision. I think it'll be significant. Um, I, the, if you look around the people that have made big jumps in college football in the last 20 years, the facility piece is a huge component. This group of kids that we're recruiting, this generation, they, they buy with their eyes. Right? Um, I, I joke all the time with, with people when we're having this conversation, like, when a kid gets drafted, like what kind of car does he buy? Right? He buys a Mercedes Benz. You know, I mean, and I get it. And and so that's kind of the way they think in the recruiting process, right? Like the 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 shock factor, the wow. The Mountain West coaches were also quick to sing the praises of Tony Sanchez for raising the bulk of the money for this facility, acknowledging the accomplishment of building a solid foundation for the future. It is a big accomplishment. I know that's not that's not easy to raise that kind of money to do something like that. And, um, you know, Coach Sanchez has sacrificed a lot to try to try to uplift Vegas, UNLV, and you know you're seeing some fruits of that labor coming out. I mean, the new facility's big. First off, when's this thing going to open? Do we have a set date yet, or are we still kind of a TBA? Well, I know they're, they're, I know they're moving fast right now, but uh, it looks like sometime, you know, after the Wyoming game, before the Boise game, it looks like. That's the target date, so we'll see. Hopefully that happens. You've been kind of recruiting to this facility uh, the last couple of years, really, as the plans have kind of unfolded. What kind of reaction are you getting from recruits as they come in? knowing that they're going to other programs and seeing the facilities that they have as well. Well, it's kind of what the coaches reiterated there. I mean, when they walk in and they're with their families and they see just the quality of it and they see the different tools they'll have to develop as a person, develop as a player, develop academically, um, it's just a, it's a great environment to be a part of. So, I mean, that, that piece now is just kind of answered with this facility when, you, when you're competing against some of your opponents for some real top-tier talent. And then, you know, you add in the Allegiant Field aspect of playing in a $2 billion stadium yeah. that the Raiders play that, that 17, 18-year-old kids watch on, on Sunday. That doesn't hurt either. No, it doesn't. I mean, in a real short amount of time, we're going to go from having very, very average facilities to having some of the top facilities in the country, which is a great thing for you on UNLV football. I mean, it's going to help you, again, your current student athletes, and once they come here, they're going to have such a better experience. And then the ones you're recruiting, you're recruiting them to these different venues, which is a big deal. We're going to uh, take everybody inside that facility when it opens and give you one final tour. I know we've been showing you the progress, but uh, wait till you see the finished product. It's going to be spectacular. We're going to take one final time out, and then we'll have some closing thoughts from Coach Sanchez and the UNLV Football Plays of the Week. But as we go to break, here's a look at how some other Mountain West teams did over the weekend. You're 
watching the Fox 5 Rep Zone Sports Show. Sponsored by R.C. Willie and Levitt Law Firm. All right, so whenever you have a, a bad game, the bounce back week is the most important week, yep. really, as we go forward to the season. You're going to see what kind of character this team has. Yeah, again, you don't get many opportunities. So it's important for us to go ahead, you know, and knuckle up in this game and go out and have a great week of practice, you know, build confidence through the week as we go and, you know, and hold everybody accountable. And if we do that, I think we'll be fine on Saturday. It is the first road game, but you also have a team that's been through the process enough. Yeah. So any concerns at all in terms of first road trip and being out of their normal routine? No, it actually might help, you know, being in camp here for a while, the first two weeks at home, again coming off a you know uh, you know an ugly loss like that. Sometimes it's good to get and get that road warrior mentality and, and get on out there and uh, play a game on the road in a tough environment. So we'll be excited and ready. It's a 12:30 Pacific time kickoff against Northwestern on Saturday. We'll be with the team. We'll have a preview for you Friday night on Fox 5 News. And of course, we're going to break it all down on Sunday in the Red Zone. Thanks for joining us for this one. We leave you tonight with the UNLV football plays of the week. Good night. The Rib Zone Sports Show, sponsored by R.C. Willie and Levitt Law Firm.